I think it's well for you. Hey, Mr. Good. Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> so you just heard all that. I mean, so. I don't know if y'all if y'all have seen it. I thought you had. The judge actually wrote a letter okay. saying that he had obtained an opinion from the Municipal Judges Association, um, which he concurred, stating in substance under two different Alabama statutes, um, he could not serve as a hearing officer with the executive authority to make the decision um, to actually impose discipline or not, suspension or termination. And he stated the statutes and his reasons for that opinion. Uh, he didn't specifically say he was resigning, but I think he asked to be relieved for that reason. He did. He did. And so are you suggesting that we still need an independent reviewer of this? Under the statute, any impartial person okay. could be the hearing officer, it could be a body, and indeed it could be the city council if they really wanted to bite off that. Are you suggesting I'm not impartial? You can make the decision or the recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't. I don't make that recommendation. That recommendation comes via the chain of command, and as the department head, I have to evaluate all the facts, and then I make that final decision as to whether I believe that there is, there is cause for whatever discipline there is and to what degree that is. Mm -hmm. So if that is not acceptable, and I, I'm not sure if I'm hearing that from you, but if that's not acceptable, then we've already talked to Chief James Barber of the uh, City of Mobile Police Department, who would act in that capacity. He has a knowledge base of police-related matters, number one. And number two, uh, he has sought um, approval by his chain of command, uh, Chief Williams, and that was already granted. <coughs> So, and he's completely impartial and knows how police departments are run. He has no prejudice towards anyone uh, and he has no ties to the city of Fairhope so that anyone uh, that comes before him would have an impartial and fair hearing. So, someone from outside, it was certainly seen to be impartial. And that's why we, we got Judge Snedeker was because, at the time, was because we wanted someone who was completely impartial. So, so in regard to what's going on in the police department right now, we'll be happy to turn that over and make arrangements for that hearing to occur. And then, um, based on what you're saying, as a result of that, if in fact the recommended discipline is such and such and falls within the appellate process with the board, then that would come before the board if, in fact, uh, the employee chose, correct? Or if you wanted to continue the double hearing procedure, you wouldn't have to, right? Well, can I you may want to, I'm not right. suggesting you don't. Can, can I ask a question? Yeah. Normally the managers know based what they're doing, whether it's the police chief or, um, or park and rec center. They sit down and, and after the recommendation usually comes to them because they're, they're working with other people and they either agree or disagree with, with the recommendation that comes to, to his desk and he can either change it, go up or down or with whatever the recommendation is and then have a hearing at that time with the employee and if they want to appeal that decision let it go straight to the board and, and not have to have, um, I, you know, because hearing. Because you know, the, off, the people that I look at to be responsible are the managers of the departments. And they ought to have some say <coughs> in what they want to do with discipline and how to do it. And that, that's why we lose some of that. Well, the for non law enforcement officers, you clearly can do that. Because the pre discipline, the way it is set up now, is not a full due process hearing. The pre discipline is simply. Proposed discipline, notice to the employee. The employee then has the opportunity to come in, tell his side of the story or her side of the story. If they have other folks they want to provide information, they can. And then the department head, whoever it may be, makes the decision to proceed with discipline. Then there is an appeal. But the statute that we're dealing with with law enforcement officers, and it doesn't give us any guidance. Many of you all have heard my dissatisfaction with Alabama statutes generally in the legislature's wisdom and how they draft them. It doesn't give you any guidance other than it has to be pre-disciplinary hearing. It's a full due process hearing. 
It's not just telling your side of the story. They have a right to an attorney to examine witnesses. Um, the, at the pre -year. At the pre-disciplinary phase, and all it tells us it must be an impartial officer that may be an individual, may be a body, which we presume is a board. And who appoints that person, I guess? Is and here we're back to my railing against the legislature. It's not crystal clear. To amend the PGO, obviously the council, it's an ordinance, must amend the PGO to ensure the proper procedures are in place. So you're in place now um, are for pre-disciplinary due process procedure uh, under the PGO. It was drafted with that statute in mind. But uh, if it's amended and some changes made, for example, if you want to eliminate the second hearing, and I'm not suggesting you do, but if you do, it would have to be amended. Uh, but the only guidance it gives on the hearing officer must be impartial. So it doesn't define it as far as the appointing authority. Um, one could suggest it doesn't say who has the power to appoint the hearing officer. It merely says that the, the municipality shall. Um, we get back to one could say under the general authority of the mayor under 114381, the general power to appoint, that that would fall to the mayor. You could say that statute itself by saying the municipality shall would afford at least concurrent authority to the council. Uh, all I can say, this is why I love the Alabama legislature as I do. In that same series of statutes, sometimes it says the governing body of the municipality, which we know refers to the council. And this particular statute doesn't say that. It just says every municipality shall do X, Y, Z. Uh, I do believe there's a at least argument that there's concurrent authority and that doesn't tell you much. That means either party could do it. Um, and we'd have to take a look. If there was a dispute, take a look at it further. But well, there's no cases would, on it. Normally it would be, would be myself and the chief working together, coming up with a recommendation to give to the council to approve. That certainly would uh, be a very viable way to approach it. Uh, not only a viable way to approach it, but Council, it sounds like it's a recommended way of approaching it. To get consensus, absolutely a recommended way of approaching it. That's not legal, that's just plain to get consensus. 